actually it impacted in uh, in many ways because uh, as everybody you know like we are separated from part of our family so this is one of the main uh, things that disturbed me today but there is also a positive part you know um, I think today time is a luxury and I really feel it you know I always used to say I don't have time for this but uh, it's been now s almost uh, seven weeks that I'm locked at home and uh, and I enjoy it to be honest with you you know it's uh, I'm refocusing you know and I find a new way to work. Uh, I brought part of my studio at home. And also, um, you know, I have two studios, one in Tunisia and one studio in Dubai. Uh, so my team in Tunisia, everybody's working from home as well. And so we're trying to to reorganize, rethink, and, uh, and question, you know, the, the, way, uh, the way I'm doing my work. So am I doing just artwork, you know, to please people, or if there is a, a real purpose behind it? So. Hopefully, like I, I, I pray that in the next project that I will do outdoors, a public art project, this dimension will be more felt by by the people. But you know, like to recreate yourself, like having a, a new way of expressing your your art. And um, me, I I work in the public space, you know. So what I love the most is the human interaction and how. You know, I, I love the human experience that are involved, you know, with what I do. And, uh, and yeah, so last week, actually, like, uh, yeah, last Sunday, we, we did this project on Zoom where I reached out to 49 people, 48 people around the world to create a piece that, uh, where each one would have a, a piece that they would put as a virtual background. And then the way I would accept them in the meeting, they, they will recreate the artwork. And, uh, and then the... The purpose of this was to, um, to raise funds, you know, raise money for two hospitals, one in Tunisia and one in France. The one in France is in the, in the, is in the city where I grew up, in Paris, and the other one is uh, the Gabes, um, which is the town I'm originally from in the south of Tunisia. So, you know, it's, uh, I think today what is important is to, to see why are we doing art, you know, what's the point of it? How can you use, I use art? As uh, me, I, I always say that, you know, I say art is a pretext, you know, I use art as a pretext, a pretext to raise money, a pretext to put light on some people, a pretext to help someone, you know, it's not just about me yet, but, but this is a difficult thing, you know, because, um, you know, just an hour ago, like I had this conversation with my wife about always questioning the intention, what do you do, what you're doing, you know, and, uh, and today we're living in a time where everything is so confusing, you know, mm. because you have, you have this kind of, uh, fame that is playing there is also why doing why trying to do good you know are you really doing for the sake of doing good or are you trying to get something further you know and uh and i think that's what is important to me like really questioning myself and and i think this covid pandemic helped me uh to refocus on that on asking myself the right question why am i doing what i'm doing I remember, you know, when I, I did this project a few years ago in the uh, in south of Tunisia, I was really struggling. I was painting this the minaret of uh, of the mosque of my town in, in Gabes, and uh, I, I after three weeks I couldn't go. I was so struggling, like I couldn't see the end. And I remember a friend of mine asked me, "What is your what is your intention behind this?" Mm -hmm. You know, and and at this time it was a challenge because I wanted to prove myself to some people, try to screw me, that would be able to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, so my intention was like taking revenge on people. So I don't know if it was right or wrong, but mm -hmm. as soon as I clicked, hey, I don't care about those people. I should just do it for the sake of, yeah. The message, you know, that I was writing was more important than that, this fight that I, I used to have with those people back in the days. Uh, and then I, I don't know, it's weird, but everything went so smoothly after that. The thing is, um, I was born and raised in France. So growing in France uh, from immigrants' parents, I never really felt uh, I was totally French. I never really felt I was totally Tunisian. You know, in France, I, 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 I've been insulted by people, you know, like this weird insult in, in French called bougnol, you know, which is uh, that's an insult made for Arab people, which is actually the way like German, people used to call French during the World War II, so they make it for Arab then, you know. 
And, uh, and then in, when I used to go to Tunisia during the summer with my parents, I used to feel the same. You know, they used to call us the Chenou Laba. Mm -hmm. Chenou Laba in French, you can translate it as in English, you can translate it as uh, Chenou Laba at home there. You know, so your home is not here, it's there, you know. And so you, I used to have this kind of identity crisis until I was, I think, 16 or 17. And I, I was like, I need, to, uh, I need to decide if I'm French or Tunisian. And uh, I decided to be Tunisian. Mm. And, um, and that's where I started learning how to read and write Arabic. And then, uh, and then I was more, I was, I was doing graffiti at this time. So I started incorporating graffiti into, a, into, a, into my calligraphy, into graffiti, mixing both of them. And so I was growing into this. And then I realized that if I was not French as well, I, would, I wouldn't be doing what I'm, I'm doing now, you know. So then Arabic calligraphy allowed me to reconcile, you know, my French identity, my Tunisian identity. And, uh, and, I, and I regret that I thought that I needed to make a choice. You know, there's no choice to be. Your, your, you know, identity is not only one layer. There is like a lot of layers that I think you need to embrace, you know, and that's, uh, and that's what brought me to where I am today, you know, and the, the same way like Arabic calligraphy helped me to bring, you know, like my, my two cultures together. I, I'm trying to use it, yeah, to, uh, to bring people together in culture as well. You know, like influence, there is so much influences, you know, because I started with graffiti. So I was really looking at the graffiti scene in France mainly. You know, uh, I used to be a b-boy. I used to, I used to break dance, you know. Uh, uh, I used to draw when I was a kid, you know. So I was, uh, I was looking at a lot of stuff. So I don't think there's only one influence, you know. But then if you look at, like, at, at calligraphy, there is uh, some people such as Hassan Masoudi, you know, the Iraqi calligrapher. Mm -hmm. or has, has brought so much color into calligraphy and then you know it's um inspiration i think come from so many places i don't think there is a, a time and a place where i was like oh, i will be inspired you know like sometimes you're sitting there and then you have a conversation with somebody and then an idea pops up and then you just, you just make it grow and it happens i work with this team so it means uh um I, I don't know, I want to talk about something. Let's say when we did Egypt, um, actually it's different. Let's put it in order. Uh, sometimes there's a challenge. So I'm like, I want to recreate myself and change myself. I'm like, I want to do this crazy thing. Okay, and then looking at the way I want to do it, I'm like, I think this would work perfectly in this place. Mm -hmm. So then I go to the place, you know, I study it, And then I'm like, okay, so the theme for this place will be this. Then I start making a lot of research, like uh, reading books and uh, looking online about references, about people who have wrote or written from this place where I want to do the thing, about the topic that I want to study, you know. Mm. And then when I found the phrase, I was like, yeah, I think the, the machine started. And now like we, uh, when I did the uh, perception in Egypt, I wanted to change myself, going to create a, an anamorphic piece. I found this place uh, in Cairo. I was like, okay, I'm going to go there. Mm -hmm. I learned about these garbage people. Then I realized actually they were like more useful than anybody else in the city. And then I was like, actually, my perception changed. So I was like, actually, yeah, the theme is perception. Then I tried to look uh, into uh, writing about perception from people who are from the Coptic community, mainly from Egypt. And that's it. And that's how I managed to convince the community to make the project. And at the same, you know, like we, I visit places, you know, like we, we, uh, there's many places I'm interested in right now, you know, such as Rwanda or like Bangladesh mainly. And that's, uh, that's places that I visited, you know, Bangladesh, I visited a few months ago, mm -hmm. uh, Rwanda not yet, but there is stuff in there that, I I feel and I, I think I will, I will do my next project there. I, I want to say something that one artist that I really uh, I don't know if you that I really respect uh, and I think his way of looking at stuff like uh, sometimes like 
make me wonder. Like I was, uh, I met him a few days, a few years ago. His name is, you know, I'm sure you know him, Christo. He's a American Bulgarian artist. You know, he, he's a guy who always rap stuff. You know, and I ask him, I say, how do you do it? And he said to me, the way I do it and I did it worked for me. So it might not work for you. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah, I have no problem to share with people the way I make it, you know, like how I organize and I create my project and everything, you know, but I think it's important for every single artist to find their own uh, path, you know what I mean? Me, the way I think in my head, um, uh, it's in my project, sometimes in my team, people, they don't get it, you know, because mm -hmm. I used to be a supply chain manager consultant. I used mm -hmm. to, and I used to be a supply chain manager, so I didn't study art. I have a master's degree in supply chain management and logistics. So the way I think is really uh, how can I optimize tasks? You know, so for example, on the project, I would be like, we start by it. Everybody's like, no, it doesn't make any sense. And I'm like, yes, because the average time for this task, if we start by this one, the average time for all the tasks would be reduced. And everybody mm -hmm. looks at me like, what is this <laughs> talking about? You know what I mean? So I work in kind of process, you know, and that's the way I, I think. But it's important that everybody think globally. You know, because the problem that a lot of artists today have is like they only think about the art, you know, when you need to think wider than that, how you're going to communicate about your art. How if you're an artist and you want to be an artist and like, and say to yourself, I'm going to, I want to, uh, uh, you say that in English, vivre de ça, sustain, sustain mm -hmm. myself as an artist. You cannot just be so, uh, you know, like, living in this kind of bubble and say, I'm just going to paint and people will love it. Right. You have to think how you're going to communicate about it, you know. And just before going on this call, I was uh, on a call with a, a member of my team and uh, and I realized that we, we made a mistake on the last project we did, you know what I mean? Mm. And so I'm going to correct that uh, after I hang up, I'm going to make a video. It's going to be the first video I'm going to put online of me, my face talking face to the camera, something I never did before. Mm. And... Uh, and that's, it's important that you find your way and how, how you make your thing. But think globally, you know, how do you feed your network? How you grow up your network? How do you reduce your cost? How do you price yourself? You know, there's a lot of stuff. And, uh, and uh, I think it's important, you know, maybe my wife a few months ago, she told me that, uh, you know, we should uh, create a, uh, a class for that. You know, like, you know, like back in the days, uh, we used to do all the design graphics of so vectorizing and anything I wanted to do on Photoshop or Illustrator, newsletter, website, videos, editing, uh, every single thing was made, you know, like, and I think it's a question of organization, but even when you grow, it's important to find people who, who, uh, who share the same value as you. Yeah. yeah. I think this is really important, you know, and, and for me, I think today the most difficult thing is to make my team grow, you know, because I have a lot of people who want to come to me and say, I would love to work with you. But then as soon as it's difficult, like I found them like just falling apart, you know. Yeah. And, uh, and I think, you know, like uh, sometimes you need somebody who has to be passionate about what you do, mm -hmm. you know. And, it's, and being an artist is not a nine to six job, you know. It's a, it's a full time job, you know. Like, uh, now this is Ramadan. I just finished eating, you know, I'm an interview and then, you know, it's, uh, it's never ending, you know, because your, your brain is made for that. You know, you work constantly thinking and working and reading and, and trying to find inspiration in, in the most random books, you know, so it's, uh, yeah. I try to find always like some local issue and that have uh, maybe a global uh, understanding, you know, when we did this project in uh, at the border of, uh, you know, the DMZ between North and South Korea, it was not, uh, it was not, I mean, it was about, you know, two countries that people speak the same language, they eat the same food, they look alike, but they separated, you know what I mean? And uh, I used my calligraphy, Arabic calligraphy, to talk about this when we talk about perception in, in Egypt, you know, inside the garbage city. It was to talk about perception, how sometimes in every country you have communities that are totally marginalized because of 
what the image of uh, the image that they they curate you mm-hmm. know so you know bringing unity i think you inspire people in a certain way you know and you hope that the message uh get understood you know and and today you know with this zoom project we did a few days ago i people loved it you know like i see people interacting with it and like oh it's so so good what you did mm-hmm. but i think we lost the focus because the focus was not to create a a live concert of Aloe Black while I was creating my piece. The purpose of it was to how with the North Peace we managed to raise money mm-hmm. for two hospitals, you know, one in Tunisia, one in France. And we put the lithograph yesterday online. We got some cells, but we're still missing some cells. So I, I'm going to make a video to say, guys, this is uh, the point of all this is that, you know, you know, we are living in a time where we need each other help and it is important that uh, somebody in in new york somebody i don't know in rwanda or like in in london by putting uh, buying a lithograph will have an impact on somebody in tunisia or in paris you know, yeah. it's, uh, that's how i see it you know that's uh, that's what this global pandemic made you understand so we all have an impact on somebody without knowing it you know so maybe this video somebody will hear something from me and will be like oh i this guy made me thought of something and then it would have an impact on him, you know, so I think there's, a, there's this kind of chain effect that is important to consider. <laughs>